Hi, and welcome to this Surfray sponsored webinar on SharePoint Search. My name is Robert Pedock, and I am co author of Pro SharePoint 2010 Search. Today I'll be discussing how to display custom properties in the SharePoint Search uh, UI. We'll specifically talk about how to show the content type property, and uh, at the end I'll also show you how to uh, do the same thing in Surfray's Search for SharePoint Enhancement Ontolica. For inform more information on Ontolica or more webinars like this and videos, please visit www.surfray.com. Thanks. So, the first step that we need to do in order to uh, display the SharePoint search uh, custom properties in the search results page is to make sure that those properties are mapped. We could have custom properties or properties that are crawled from other things like uh, web pages or physical properties from documents on a file share that we're pro crawling. We want to map those first so that SharePoint Search can utilize those. Then we need to do a full crawl because we can't pick up those properties without doing a full crawl. Then we want to go to the result page and do some settings on the search result web part in order to make those properties visible. We'll be doing that here and these are the steps in this uh, PowerPoint here that will show you exactly what uh, modifications you need to make to the XSLTs on the web part in order to display those. And the, I'll also talk about the, the kinds of things and I'll show you in the live demonstration of the kinds of things that you need to be aware of when you're doing this. The steps continue that we will do some template uh, calls in the XSLT. First, we'll, uh, we'll add a template that's going to call that web, uh, that custom property, and then also call that out so that we can display it in the result list. And I'll show you where to do that. Finally, I'll show you a little bit of uh, troubleshooting. What do you do if you don't see anything? And there's a little bit extra XML here that that I can show you to um, to display what the search results are actually bringing back in the data set. So um, please come to our website to download this code. There'll be some code that I'll be showing, but if you uh, you don't need to write it down or memorize it or look at the video to get it, you can get it directly from our site. So that'll be fine. So let's go to my my site here. So the first place to look or to work when you're trying to get custom properties uh, into the search results is in the central administration. As we know, most, if not all, of the search capabilities of SharePoint 2010 are under a ma the search service application, which is a service application built into SharePoint 2010. Uh, it's usually installed by default, but you can, of course, install parts of it on several s different servers in the farm. So if you don't see it, there could be a reason for that. So we have the... Um, search service application and there are a number of different things we can do here. The two areas what we're most concerned of for this webinar are the uh, content sources where we can do the crawling. It's important to know that how to launch a full crawl because we're going to have to do at least one if not two full crawls in order to get our properties mapped and available in the search results. So once you've crawled your content with a full crawl and you have the properties available in the in the columns or from the documents or whatever, uh, SharePoint will go out and collect all of those properties and store them in, in its database. Then we want to make a metadata property mapping. And what this is doing is basically taking these crawled properties, the, the properties that SharePoint's crawler has picked up from documents, it could be physical properties like document type or document size, it could be uh, metadata in web pages, it could be custom properties or uh, properties from col custom columns in SharePoint or some of the built-in properties in SharePoint as well. So um, we want to map those here to a property that is actually going to be allowed to be exposed in the SharePoint search UI. Now you can see there are a lot of alt mappings here already and uh, Microsoft has made a lot of default mappings and map them to what they think are going to be the, the best uh, properties. Now a lot of the time that these properties, um, like Basic 5, are actually physical properties that are coming from uh, documents in share, or that could be indexed with SharePoint. And sometimes these properties will pollute the property that we want to use. And Content Type is a really good example of this, because often I will see, um, when I try to call the Content Type property, I just get back uh, 
nothing. And that's, I'm assuming, because Basic Five is putting a, like a placeholder or something in there that is not is is overriding the actual content type. So if I want to get the content type, I want to actually make my own con uh, mapped property on, based on the SharePoint's content type value. So I can go up here to make a new manage property. And I'm going to call this one C type because content type is already taken. And the content type value in SharePoint is uh, shouldn't and can't be modified. So I'll add a mapping. And you can see here in the crawled property selection, I can see all of the properties that um, are actually picked up by the crawler. So there's lots of different areas where uh, properties can be picked up by the crawler. And I'm going to choose, choose SharePoint because that's, those are the ones that are um, specifically coming from uh, content in SharePoint. And I want to find one here which is prefixed by the OWS, which refers to SharePoint and it'll be the content type one so I'll just choose that so now I've really got a pure mapping my C type property only has SharePoint content types in it I could have of course add properties from other types of documents if I crawled them from file shares or something like that if I wanted to but I think in many cases in SharePoint and especially if we're making our own content types we want this to be a pure value because we don't want to pollute it with other stuff. So um, it is a text property, and I can just save that. I, of course, already have made this because I need to crawl again once I've got these properties created. So create the property, map it to a single crawled property, and then do a full crawl. And it's really important that we do a full crawl at this point because if we don't, we're not going to get those properties available. I can also go here and choose the crawled property just to make sure that it is actually included in the index. And there's a little checkbox here on the crawled property. You can see in this list that there are the properties that I've mapped and then all of the crawled properties that I've mapped those to. And I can actually click on the, ma the crawled properties as well to find out what they're mapped to and to see whether they're going to be included in the index for, for search. So um, we want to do that. We want to include these values in the in the property index. There we go. <clears throat> now, after I've recrawled this, I can actually go out to my site into the search and uh, display that property.